It's time to clean up our coffee tree because it's looking pretty crazy. Let's go. So the other day I started cleaning up the coffee tree and I figured why not bring you all along for this because it would be a really good video because I know there's a lot of you since doing this, this coffee tree series that have decided to start growing coffee trees as well. And coffee trees are an amazing plant because they are so resilient and they can take an absolute hacking and just thrive. You know, we typically cut this tree back now that it's gotten to the height that it is about once a year because it gets so tall that it starts touching the ceiling. And then it starts really stressing because there's no light up there, there's no airflow up there, it just does really badly. So we end up cutting it and hacking it off so we can keep it at a certain height. But then what that does is it sends a lot of energy down through the plant and anywhere it feels like it can send up some side growth, it does. The problem with side growth is it restricts airflow, it restricts sunlight, especially growing indoors, and it also it steals energy from fruit production which then causes a whole lot of other issues with small fruit, fruit that doesn't ripen properly, and, uh, and it also does not set as much fruit because energy is spent elsewhere. Um, what, what you'll see as we get in here, I've already pruned out about probably 50, 60% of the chaos, but I need to do a little bit more because I, I realized that I should bring you all along for this, and, uh, and so I stopped. But uh, yeah, but what you'll notice is that it, it resembles a lot of uh, the same similarities that tomatoes have with suckers. Now these are not uh, suckers like tomatoes are that you can just pull off, but they are, um, you know, they are side branches that are pretty much treated just like a brand new plant. Um, the tree will not fruit on them. The tree will actually form new lateral growth on them. They'll start branching off. It does create a lot of chaos. Um, whoa, the sun just came out like crazy. All right, there we go. Sorry about that. The sun just came out fierce. So uh, I wasn't looking at the viewfinder there. But um, what, uh, what happens is that the plant will create all this new side growth and then you just end up with all this chaos. And so every, every once in a while, we got to go in and kind of clean it up. And it's going to be a benefit for the plant. It's going to be a benefit for the fruit production. And uh, you'll really see some, some really marked results. You'll see it does look a little thin. It looks a little sparse in there. And that's just the nature of coffee trees. When you're growing them indoors, light does not penetrate into the center of the tree. So the center, the center of the tree tends to be a little bit void of foliage. And that's very normal. Once the growing season comes, it'll fill that out. It'll put new leaves out. And it'll fill out a lot more than in the, in the winter months when it drops a lot of its leaves. And that's just, I said, like I said, that's the natural progression. And so uh, let's get in here, let's clean it out, because it's definitely overdue. So at the very top here, you'll see where we clipped it off. And where we clipped it off, it has formed some more side growth here. So let's come in here, and clip that, and clip that. There we go, we don't want any more, we don't want any more growth up here, because that just, it ends up growing up too, too tall there. So we keep that clip back. And then coming down here, you'll notice that um, it's got a lot of really good layering. This has just got a wonderful amount of foliage here that, that comes, out, comes out in layers to let air flow through. It fruits really well. And therefore, it's got really good structure. But as we get down here, you kind of see you kind of see some, some chaos starting to happen. So coming off of this new branch, coming up here, it decided to fork, created a new, new growth point here, but then it also created a new growth point here. I wanna take all of this off because this is a whole new tree that it just cannot sustain. I originally did that so that it could, um, so it could kind of fill out and get some good foliage. But the problem is, is it's actually growing now two separate plants. So that needs, that needs to go there. And then it's actually got another bunch of growth here. You'll see these little side shoots, these little side suckers are what's causing a lot of this lack of airflow. See all three of these? These are all new, new branches. They've got to go. All right, so I'm going to come in here and remove... 
that branch. And you can see how it's treating it just like a new plant here. It's got the, it's got all this new main leader growth and it's creating all this new lateral growth. It's just too much and the plant really doesn't know what to do with it. I'm just coming in here and taking it off. Anything that's growing, anything that's growing new lateral growth can be treated just like a whole new plant. So all that's got to go because all I want is just, all I want is just straight lateral growth coming from one main leader point. That way it's going to just really free up a lot of the, a lot of the chaos in here. Okay. And then I see here, there's a lot of crisscrossing growth. It's kind of choking itself out in the center of this tree here. So I'm going to come in here and prune that out. And then I think I'm going to come down here and assess. Oh yeah, there's a lot of new, the problem is whenever, whenever something gets damaged, it forks. So then when it gets damaged, it, it forks again and forks again. And then you get all of this stuff down here that, I don't really know what I want to do with it. You can see down here, there's just a lot of like old branches that died and then it created a new, a new bud point. I think I'm just going to take this and uh, as much as that hurts. Yeah. I think that was a wise move. You can see, look at, see this, this branch, this branch had damage here. So it forked and then it forked again when there was more damage and it forked again. It just, you know what? Yeah, that was a good, that was a good call there. And you know what, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to remove that as well. That was a lot of, that was a lot of hacking. I'm, oh man, I hate doing that, but that's got to go too. I'm just really kind of cleaning up. I think this is, as you go, you kind of begin to see the form that you want the, the tree to take. And I just, you know what, I've got enough growth here. I do not want to risk this tree killing itself from disease. So now looking at the base of the tree, we can see a way, way more airflow. I mean, this is just a whole lot better of a look. In all honesty, I, I really should have taken those branches out sooner. But I mean, this is this is what we're working with here. This is, uh, this is a, a real good amount of foliage that was just kind of adding more mess than we really needed. Three, two, one. So looking at the base of the tree here, you can see just how much I've taken out. I think a lot of times we fear taking out foliage, especially on trees that uh, are, you know, maybe very sentimental to us. This tree is extremely sentimental to Mrs. Emma Gardner and I, or, uh, you know, maybe it's a slow growing tree and you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to hamper its growth. We always talk about the fact that you, know, you can, you can defoliate quite a bit on trees this large because they, they definitely bounce back quite a lot. Not to mention that as, uh, as spring approaches, we're actually going to repot this into its final pot, which is out in the garage right now. And that is, uh, it's a pot about twice as large as it is in right now. And that's going to really allow for a lot more growth on top of that. As it starts to grow into that pot, then we'll have to pretty much regulate its growth so that it does not outgrow, outgrow the pot and become stressed. But you can see here, and we took out a lot of foliage. It really needed to happen. It really was, um, I mean, it was just overgrown to say the least. But, you know, as we come up here, we can see there's no more, there's no more side growth. There's no more, there's no more of that, uh, you know, new growth in there coming up throughout the tree. Each one of these little levels of the tree have, have their own set of growth. So it's not like it's, uh, you know, it's not like it's, it's not over layered. It's just got really good airflow throughout here. I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. So that's the, that is the coffee tree there. As it, um, you know, as it produces more flowers, you'll see it's going to start blooming pretty soon. It's got a lot of its budding, a lot of its budding nodes already kind of, already kind of going here. So as that produces flowers, it's actually going to be a lot better off to be layered this way because the the uh, the buds will actually have more access to sunlight, meaning that they'll probably produce better as well.
So there we go, there is pruning the coffee tree. I really hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. I know it's something that a lot of you have asked for. You said, hey, when the time comes to prune your coffee tree, could you show us how to do it? So I pretty much showed you what I was doing and, and again, I spared you another 20 minutes of pruning that I did earlier. So that's uh, it's really as simple as that. Just remember the biggest take home is to keep it to one main growth leader. There's nothing worse than a tree that just creates four, five, six different growth leaders because then you don't know what to prune. It becomes harder as the plant grows. It just is way easier to do it young and do it often. So uh, yeah, there you go. Pruning coffee is not that difficult. It can be, uh, can be challenging to, to do it because of the sentimental value or you know the, just how, how slow they grow. But like I said, the, uh, the positives so far outweigh the negatives. And plus, if you're someone that really does enjoy to propagate all of these can be propagated. You can put these in some rooting gel and propagate them. I just, uh, <laughs> I don't need the extra coffee trees. Mrs. Emma Gardner is plenty fine with this nice six footer here. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great one. And as always, we'll see you on the next episode. Grow big. Bye.